Hi, my name is Oksana Kravtsova. In this presentation, I'm going to tell you about Google Cloud Platform Cloud Healthcare Application Programming Interface. The main points of our presentation are purpose, uses, use cases, fire, and how to use the Google Cloud Healthcare API. Here are the questions to be considered in this presentation. The first question we are going to consider is what is the Google Cloud Healthcare API and how could it be used? The second question is describe three use cases for the API from the perspective of a provider, a patient or this course. The next question we are going to consider is how could we leverage the Google Cloud Healthcare API in the health informatics course to get future students up to speed with FHIR? And the last thing we are going to do is demonstration how to use the Google Cloud Healthcare API. So what is the Google Cloud Healthcare application programming interface? The Cloud Healthcare application programming interface provides industry standard protocols and formats for ingesting, storing, analyzing, and integrating healthcare data with cloud-based applications. For many applications, the healthcare API can provide a cloud-based alternative to on-premise stacks, implementing DICOM in digital imaging and communications in medicine. Health Level 7 International Version 2, or FHIR STU3 standards. This can simplify data integration with existing systems and allow developers to focus on such features as user experience and intelligence. This diagram represents a baseline architecture for FHIR Health Level 7 Version 2 and DACOM data integration. It shows three integration patterns. Use of an integration engine such as Coverleaf or NextGen Connect. This can be appropriate for both FHIR and Health Level 7 version data. Direct use of the Cloud Healthcare API and LLP adapter to forward data to the Cloud Healthcare Health Level 7 version 2 API. And ingestion of DACOM imaging data from a PACS system or vendor nature archive. Each type of data goes through three phases ingestion, cleansing, filtering, transformation, and processing. The details of each step, however, differ somewhat depending on the data modality. The Cloud Healthcare API provides a number of key features that are critical to bridging current technologies to the next generation of healthcare systems and applications. They are standards conformance, compliance with privacy regulations, data location control, security, bulk import and export, the identification, auditability, and high availability. How could it be used? The API can be used for healthcare machine learning applications, data level integration of healthcare systems, and secure storage and retrieval of various types of healthcare and life science data, including electronic protected health information and other forms of PII. Now let's consider use cases. The Cloud Healthcare API enables a wide range of capabilities spanning administrative, clinical, and research use cases. One of them is advanced administrative, clinical, and research analysis and reporting. Once data is converted into a standard format such as FHIR or the OMOP common data model, it can be used in BigQuery to produce insights into administrative, clinical, and research questions. For example, large-scale analysis and reporting of hospital readmissions, statistics by facility disease, practitioner, or any of a number of different dimensions is easy using BigQuery's SQL support. BigQuery also supports a number of popular reporting and visualization tools to help you gain tailored insight into your data. And let's talk about the next use case, such as machine learning. 
The ability to apply machine learning to patient data in order to repeatedly identify potential diagnosis is an exciting new development. For example, DICOM radiological and natural light images stored in Cloud Health Care API datasets can be used to train advanced transfer flow of machine learning models. And those trained models can then run in Google Cloud Machine Learning to analyze large volumes of data ingested via production instances of Cloud Health Care API. Predictions generated by these machine learning models can they be stored directly in the DICOM images themselves, enabling radiologists to take advantage of this analysis in the context of existing workflows. Such high volume analysis helps the clinicians by performing advanced consistent scanning for the presence of common diseases. Detected anomalies can then be validated by skilled practitioners and treatment started quickly if problems are identified. Similarly, the use of machine learning to leverage large amounts of data to help predict clinical outcomes is helping practitioners identify populations that are at risk of adverse outcomes so that they can intervene early enough to influence the result. This has the potential to significantly reduce hospital readmissions, for example or to identify patterns of care that require re-evaluation. And the last use case I would like to consider is the identification. And the identification, reducting or transformation of sensitive data elements is often an important step in pre-processing healthcare data so that it can be made available for analysis machine learning models, and other use cases. The Cloud Healthcare API provides capabilities to de-identify data stored in the service, facilitating analysis by researchers or machine learning analysis for advanced NMLE scans. The next question we are going to consider is how could we leverage the Google Cloud Healthcare API in the health informatics course to get future students up to speed with FHIR. FHIR is the emerging standard for healthcare interoperability. FHIR specifies a robust, extensible data model using REST semantics for interacting with resources. FHIR benefits from technical advances in web development to deliver significant industry traction including major electronic health record system and support among notable government projects. Google Cloud's Fire API provides full support for SDU3 resources. In addition, Google Cloud is developing tools and utilities to transform data from other formats into and out of Fire resources to simplify data ingestion for use with analytics and machine learning tools. Now let's consider how to use the Google Cloud Healthcare API. Before starting, I would like to say a couple of words about structure to expand our understanding how it works. The Cloud Healthcare API exposes interfaces that enable to perform different types of functions. Administrative functions such as creating or listing data sets and storage that will contain your data. Data access functions that allow you to create, update, delete, and share the data stored in Cloud Healthcare API or to perform bulk import and export operations. Security functions, the identification functions, and metadata functions such as retrieval of a FHIR capability statement for the FHIR API. Now let's consider how to use the Google Cloud Healthcare API. Before the beginning, you should go to website showed on the top of the page. And then in the GCP console, go to the Manage Resources page and select or create a project. To create a project, you have to fill project name and location fields. So we have created a new project. And when we come back to manage resources, we will see our project there, how it showed on the pre-screen. Click on our project and get information about this project. In Tab EM and Admin, you can add or remove owners of the project. Also, you can investigate other tabs on the menu on the left side, have it showed on the pre-screen. Before using Google Cloud Platform, make sure that billing is enabled for your Google Cloud Platform project. 
To know more about it, go to link learn how to enable billing. Also, you can change the billing account for a project and enable or disable billing for a project. On the slide, you can see how to set up authentication. In the GCP console, go to the Create Service Account page. From the Service Account list, select New Service Account. Then, in the Service Account Name field, enter a name. And from the Role list, select Project Owner. Click Create, and then a JSON file that contains your key downloads to your computer. Set the environment variable Google Application Credentials to the file path of the JSON file that contains your Service Account key. This variable only applies to your current shell session, so if you open a new session, set the variable again. The next important step is access to Haskara API. Ensure that all user accounts that will access to a Haskara API are whitelisted for access. If you are unsure, reach out to your point of contact. To enable the Haskara API, go to link Enable the API. After getting access to Haskara API, you can start to install the Cloud CDK. For this, you should go to the link Install and Initialize the Cloud CDK that is shown on this slide. To install a component at the current version of your Cloud CDK installation, run the command gcloud components install with component ID. And then you will see the window where you should choose yes or no to confirm the installation. If you choose yes, then you will get this component to your Cloud CDK. After finishing all installations, you can start to use the Google Cloud Healthcare API. At first, let's create a data set. Data sets are the basic containers that hold healthcare data in Google Cloud Platform. In order to create a data set and store, first select the GCP projects and location you wish to use to store and manage your data. Then you can create a data set by issuing an API request similar to the one shown below. This command will create a data set in the project and region specified by project ID and locations, respectively. The data set will have the name specified in the data set ID parameter in the post body. On the slide, you can see an example of a post request using curl or window PowerShell. If the request is successful, the server returns a 200 OK HTTP status code and the response in JSON format. The response contains an identifier for a long-running operation. Long-running operations are returned when method calls might take a substantial amount of time to complete. You can see these operations on this slide. Using the response returned above, call the operation get method to track the status of the operation and view more details. If the request is successful, the server returns a 200 OK HTTP status code and a response with the status of the operation in JSON format. You can tell that the operation finished when the response contains done true. So you can see the code on this slide. Now let's talk about how to create and file store in data set. Once the dataset is created, you can create one or more modality-specific stories in the dataset. As the process is essentially the same regardless of modality. To create and file a story in dataset, for example, you can use a command similar to the following. Please see this command on the slide. This command will create and file a story with the name specified by file story ID in the dataset identified by dataset ID in the project and region specified by project ID and location. Note that addition of the modality type file stories to the end of the URL. To read file data from a file store, for example, you use an HTTP GET operation against a path that identifies both the file store to be read and the specific data you are looking for. On the slide, you can see get dataset details with using curl and PowerShell commands. Also, you can see such operation as delete database. To delete a dataset, make a delete request providing the name of the dataset and an access token. The following shows an example of a delete request using curl and Windows PowerShell. 
Also, you can see how to clean up or delete the project. If you decide to delete the project, follow the next step. The first step is in the GCP console, go to the project page. And then in the project list, select the project you want to delete and click delete it. And finally, in the dialog, type the project ID and then click shutdown to delete the project. But you should know that deleting a project has the following effects. Everything in the project is deleted and custom project IDs are lost. Here you can see work that used in this presentation. And thank you for your attention.